Welcome back. In our last couple of lectures, we started talking about cryptography, and we're going to continue with that today, some properties of ciphers. By the way, when I use the term cipher, all I mean is an encryption algorithm. I'll, I'll use those two terms sort of interchangeably. So what, is, what are the characteristics of a good encryption? Well, uh, at least in the modern time, we want uh, an encryption algorithm to be based on sound mathematics. We want it to have been analyzed by competent experts and found to be uh, sound. And we want it to have stood the test of time. The upshot of this, I guess, is that unless you're an expert, you probably shouldn't invent your own encryption algorithm, or it probably won't be very strong. OK, so an encryption algorithm is said to be breakable if it's possible to break it given enough time and data. Right, so a lot of encryption algorithms just use um, as a key, uh, a bit string of n bits, say. And since there are two to the n possible bit strings, you could actually try them all, given that you had time. And so modern algorithms tend to be breakable. Um, even, a, even an encryption algorithm like uh, the advanced encryption standard, which uses a key of up to 256 bits, that's a lot of possibilities, 2 to the 256. But it's breakable because you could program a computer to try that, and if you came back, you know, in a few hundred thousand years, it would probably have the answer for you. Okay. Uh, another thing that you want to know, though, is that it, to be breakable, an algorithm has to be such that you can actually determine when you find the right answer. So, for example, a lot of modern algorithms just take one bit string and turn it into another bit string. And so, unless you have some way of recognizing when you get the right bit string, you may just sail right past the, the key. And so typically to break a modern algorithm, you need some ciphertext, plain text pairs that you know match. And so if the key that you think might be the right one works on those pairs, then it's likely that it is the right key. OK, another word uh, that we want to introduce is that an algorithm is strong if, it's, uh, if there's no better way to break it than essentially trying all the keys you know, sequentially. So um, most strong algorithms are still breakable, right? Sort of by definition. If you try all the keys, you find the right one. Um, but what this suggests is that we would like that search to be as long as possible. And so the larger the key space, that is the number of possible keys, the longer it takes to find the right one if you just search them uh, systematically. So in particular, if we have a bit string of length n, there are two to the n possibilities. And if you're just doing a linear search on that, on average, when you're searching a linear space, uh, you find the, the right one about halfway down, assuming that it's there. And so that means two to the n minus one operations. And so as n gets bigger, the search gets bigger. And so for example, if you have a key of length 256, that means you need approximately 2 to the 251 operations, and that's a lot of operations. OK, so what, what do we use to construct uh, modern encryption algorithms? Well, there are sort of two simple building blocks, substitution and transposition. Substitution means we take a symbol in our plain text and we replace it by another symbol. Uh, we saw an example of that with our pirate. Uh, with our pirate example. Um, the other one is transposition, and that means taking the, uh, the symbols within a text and moving them around. Uh, now, it might seem like these are very simple operations and, and simplistic almost, but here's the bottom line. Almost all modern, commercial, symmetric encryption algorithms basically use these two operations, and they use them over and over again in very complicated ways. So in combination, they're really very powerful. And what do we want to accomplish by doing these operations? Well, we want to accomplish confusion and diffusion. Confusion means taking a symbol in the plain text and replacing it by something else to cause uh, the attacker to have trouble extracting that original symbol. Okay? And you can see that substitution is probably pretty good at this whereas transposition isn't all that good at it. The other thing that we want is diffusion. Diffusion means taking the information content at a particular place in the plain text and either moving it somewhere else 
or smearing it out over several positions within the ciphertext. And once again, you can see that confusion, uh, excuse me, substitution probably isn't very good at this, but transposition is because it tends to move things around. Okay, so what have we said in this lecture? An encryption algorithm is breakable if there's some systematic process by which you can extract the plain text from the ciphertext. And often that means searching the key space. Uh, an encryption algorithm is strong if it's not possible to do much better than just a brute force search, meaning a linear search of the key space. And finally, most symmetric encryption algorithms use some combination of substitution and transposition. And what we want to accomplish from that is confusion and diffusion. Thank you.